Hello viewers and welcome back to another video. Thank you for tuning in. Got a very interesting camera here to look at today. A video camera from the late 1970s. Model number DXC 1640p. Interesting fact that when this camera came out, broadcasters were actually still using 16mm film because video was still inferior at this time period. Until manufacturers like Sony started building better quality video cameras because early video cameras suffered something called picture lag, especially in low light conditions. This is a very early example of a broadcast camera, but this camera only uses a single tube. Broadcast cameras usually have three tubes, one for each colour. It's a very unusual looking camera this. It's a camera I was after for quite some time. Uh, they don't come up very often on eBay, and when they do, they usually come on quite a high price. Unfortunately, my example here is not working, and it's uh, not in great shape either. Normally a camera like this would come in a very large, hard plastic case. And the battery adapter on the back there is missing all of its contents. All I'm left with is the outer shell. Um, originally this would have had a battery pack built in and a uh, cable coming out to plug into the side of the camera for the 12 volts that's needed to power this camera. Specification wise, the single pickup tube is a 2 3 quarter inch mixed filled Trinicon tube with a maximum resolution of 300 lines. Minimum illumination is 100 lux at f1.4 signal to noise ratio 45 decibels and chroma at 35 decibels. The camera's housing looks to be magnesium alloy and power consumption at 12 watts weighing in at just under 5 kilos with the included lens and viewfinder that doesn't include the battery pack. Another problem this camera has is the dreaded filter rot. The infrared filter that covers the tube up has perished. It's absolutely disintegrated on this model. Sometimes you can be lucky and only get a partial distortion around the edges of the uh, IR filter but in this case this one's completely crystallized. I've had exactly the same problem on one of my Sony HVC 3000Ps. The lens that came with this camera is actually a Canon lens and it's around about six times optical zoom. It also has auto aperture and uses the early C-mount connection. So next then let's have a look at the specifications, the features and benefits and the connections of this camera. This camera, like other broadcast cameras from the same time period, uses the Q-type connector on the back, which is a 14-pin connector. Uh, this carries the uh, audio and video signals along with mic, and usually a record sync signal as well. Uh, but on this camera, there is no record start-stop button on the handle. On the left side of the camera body, next to the iris control cable, is a white balance auto or manual that you can adjust. And just above a couple of adjustments for red and blue, and then you've got a small meter there showing white balance. As with other broadcast cameras, you have a built-in filter system, which includes daylight and indoor, along with a cover to protect the tube when not in use. And on the back, you can adjust what the viewfinder sees, either camera or VTR playback. And on the left side of the camera, there's just one screw to gain access to the internals on the left side. On the black and white CRT viewfinder, you can adjust brightness and contrast. The right side of the camera is quite sparse. There is a composite video output in the form of a BNC connector, full size mic jack, and headphone socket. The headphone socket looks like a 3.5mm jack. There is also a built in microphone on the front of this camera, and there's your DC input that comes from the battery pack on the back. Center pin is negative in this instance, and next to that is the viewfinder port. As you can see, the internal switches on the battery pack there are completely missing. Uh, there would have been a DC 12 volt output there, a switch, and I think on the other side is a monitor. And uh, probably a charging port there maybe to charge a battery in situ, I'm not sure, I've never seen one. The model number of this battery pack adapter is DC5. On this uh, camera, this was probably just before they started using the tripod adapters that uh, we all know now that the cameras take. This has a full size along with the standard tripod mount. And just under the foam shoulder mount there is an external sink or internal sink switch. One of the things I love about this camera is the way you get to the insides of it. Uh, they've actually built in a system that you undo a couple of large screws and the sides open up like gall wings to reveal the internal circuit boards and to supposedly give you easier access. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, my camera here is not working, it's completely dead. Getting no life out of it whatsoever. In fact, when I plug in my bench power supply, it's not drawing any amps at all. I've also tried powering up rather the Q connector using the external 70 DC power supply and I'm still not seeing any life. So there's something quite wrong with this. Unfortunately, I don't have a service manual for this camera. The only one I found is on eBay in America and it's about $20 just for the postage. 
I've opened the camera up and had a look inside and I cannot see any internal fuses, which is quite unusual. Because usually when you look in domestic equipment, there is always an internal fuse. So next I started having a closer inspection of some of the larger components. And I did in actual fact spot a capacitor that was bulging. So I've tested it here in my little capacitor tester and the reading as you can see is not quite right. So I'll swap that out and uh, still it made no difference. I tested a couple of other capacitors, uh, removed them and tested them and they seem to be giving uh, close enough readings to what they're supposed to be. So I reinserted them. So I decided to dig a little bit further and have a look on this side panel here as it seems quite deep. Uh, there was actually two circuit boards here, one on top of it, the other one. Uh, but once I got it open and had a look inside, everything looked absolutely fine. I couldn't see anything physically damaged. I must say I was very surprised at just how clean the insides of this camera are. Um, it's certainly a lot better condition internally than it is externally. I also find it very interesting when you see those extra holes on a PCB that's unpopulated and those wires don't actually connect to anything. Um, I forget the reason why that is actually. If uh, you know, let me know in the comments. Next I decided to follow the 12 volt input from the DC plug there onto the board to see where it leaded to. And I started testing um, in the area where the power was supposed to be going. Uh, there was 12 volts getting into the uh, PCB so there was no problem with the DC in jack. And there's no uh, signs of life from the 14 pin camera jack on the back of the camera either. Power does seem to be uh, reaching the board as I say at this stage but uh, it is only getting so far. I've checked the two voltage regulators there and there is actually 12 volts getting to both of them. So next I decided just to test those two uh, voltage regulators just to make sure they weren't faulty. So I thought I'd unsolder the pins to do this so I could test them out of circuit using the diode tester on my multimeter. As far as I can tell they seem to be okay. I'm only getting a reading from the left pin and the center pin and not the right pin. Interestingly, I'm getting a different reading actually from each transistor, even though they say model number B856, a power transistor. So next up, I thought I'd uh, try reflowing all the joints in this area of the board, just in case there was a cold solder joint somewhere. But unfortunately, this had no positive effects. So that's about as far as I can go with this camera at the moment, with my current knowledge. I'm still not having a service manual for this. It's a little bit difficult to know where to look next. So if anybody has any suggestions or has any experience with this camera, please let me know in the comments. Uh, so this will be part one of this video. And hopefully going forward, if I can find a service manual and some help, uh, there will be a part two on this uh, video. And we'll see if we can get this camera back to life. So for now, it's time to put this camera back together and uh, put it back on a shelf until uh, we can look at it further. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this with me. Uh, it's a very nice camera to look at this and it'll be nice to uh, get it working. So hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, in a future video we'll uh, get a little bit further. Well, I guess that just leaves me to say, as always, thanks for watching. And until the next video, I'll be seeing you. And if you did enjoy watching this video, you may want to take a look at some of my other videos on similar themes. I'm always buying something on eBay, some old piece of technology and trying to repair it. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.